welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Although ESCOM has been able to reduce its debt by 83 billion rand, its debt position remains unsustainable. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss whether a solution can be found. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM was able to reduce its debt fairly substantially last year. Yes, I think it was a surprising figure, as you say, 83 billion from 484 billion down to 401 billion. It's still massive. Um, but it's not at least on that steep re steeply rising curve that we've seen over the last decade. And there were fears that it was going to breach the 500 billion rand level at some stage. So this is a major clawback in the year, mostly uh, because of two reasons. One, they uh, paid back more debt than they raised in new debt. So 65 billion was paid back and they raised 15 billion in new debt. And a, a key factor was the strengthening of the rand which uh, after their hedging and everything like that, they were able to reduce that overall figure by 83 billion rand. Uh, and the outlook is that they'll continue to try and pay back this debt by repaying more every year than th what they raise in fresh capital and having a very constrained capital expenditure outlook. Is this enough to place the utility on a sustainable debt footing? The short answer is no. You know, at 400 billion rand, uh, this remains out of ESCOM's reach in terms of being able to fund this debt through its own operational activities. So we know that we as taxpayers have been footing the bill and there have been a number of transfers already to ESCOM and there are a number of future transfers also planned to ESCOM to try and close that gap. Um, and even with these very steep uh, tariff increases of this year, is also not going to be enough to close that gap. So no, the short answer is that the position remains unsustainable and Eskom remains reliant on the taxpayer. What is being said about the options for further relief? Unfortunately, very little. You know, we had the uh, NEDLAC compact late last year driven by COSATU and uh, the, the social partners agreed that this debt issue on Eskom was a priority and needed to be sorted out uh, ASAP because it was a risk not only to ESCOM, but to the whole economy, to the Treasury's fiscal balances. So the, the, a lot of urgency and priority was given it to last year, but it seems that urgency and priority hasn't really carried through into 2021 in terms of firm outcomes. I think the discussions, as f uh, Minister Pravin Gordon says, are still a work in progress, and we don't have much vis visibility yet of what the options are. You know, we had in the past the the debt to equity swaps with PRC taking on uh, the load and getting equity in, uh, to replace its debt. Those were pretty unpopular because it was treating bondholders differently, which you can't do in this world, in a very interconnected and joined up. You have to treat shareholders, but in this case bondholders equally. So I think that one uh, didn't fly. So I think the, the main solution that's being looked at is really about uh, the Treasury taking over this debt and it becoming a national debt rather than an Eskom debt. But in the meantime, we're seeing Eskom trying to clean up where it can with these debt reduction programs, paying back more every year than what it's raising, cutting back on capital expenditure, and really also as it restructures and unbundles, because we know Eskom's in a process of being split into three, uh, with Generation being the, the, the entity that's really had to raise most of this debt to build the Kusiles, the Ngulas, and the Madupis of this world, which are also over budget and late. But uh, uh, to do that, um, uh, it has to split the debt between the different entities. So we've also got some indication how they're going to do it. So, uh, they're saying that a generation entity, one split, will take on about 50% of the debt and the other 50% will be shared between the other two entities. So that is new news coming out of Eskom. Whether that's fair is not clear because really a generation has been the main entity that has had to raise this debt over the last few years. And whether it's sustainable for the transmission company and the distribution company to have that sort of debt burden is also not clear. But I suppose that is just uh, getting the framework in place for once there is a bigger debt solution, which as I said earlier remains a work in progress and is not visible in terms of the solutions and options on the table other than the sort of general feeling that this debt needs to probably need to be uh, transferred across to the National Treasury. By when could a solution be put in place? Well, that's the 400 billion rand question. 
and we don't know. I mean, I think the, there was a lot of urgency shown towards the end of last year. It's still an urgent issue. If it's not sorted out, it means that the finance minister is going to have to look at this issue again when the, 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 when the current transfers run out. And every year it's getting more and more unpopular and politically difficult to, to justify these trends, especially when uh, consumers are also taking on these massive uh, rises in tariffs at the same time. So you're paying both as a consumer and as a taxpayer. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul, it feels like, and it, it really is, uh, I think, uh, for South African society, something that we have to sort out with some urgency. And I think it's not really acceptable that we keep hearing that it's a work in progress. We need to start uh, seeing some real act action around this and uh, have some resolution as South Africa. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.